hello everyone this is Imi from iTrade Ames welcome back to my channel first day of October new month uh, new fantastic month September was uh, started well then it was a bit slow in the middle but then it picked up a little bit later so if you don't know me my name is Imi I trade the DAX 30 on the M5 and the M1 chart at the London Open and the US 30 or the DAX at the New York Open. What we do is that we look for um, a particular type of pattern right at the beginning. Uh, so the strategy that we apply to trading the DAX or the strategy that we apply to trade the London session is what we call the low bot method. The low bot method is our particular uh, strategy to trade um, at the London Open. We're looking for 5, 10, 15 points profits and all you have to do is uh, to basically follow those very simple rules of the strategy and we just look for a breakout. So uh, in this video I'm going to do a little bit of a, a, a bit of a recap for today's price action. So let's have a look at it. Please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you get a notification every time there's a new video. Okay, so this is the M5 chart of the DAX right now. Uh, this is where it began. So that's what it is. The London Open started here. Uh, we have the other important level to mark is the, the Frankfurt Open. So the Frankfurt Open is here. We have an indicator for that, the sessions line, which uh, uses the session. So I'll show you in the next chart. So before you start, what we look at is uh, we start from the hourly chart. So what we would do is that we would mark what's happening towards the left. So over here, this would be of interest for me. These levels are of interest to me. As you can see, I've marked this level and then this level and this level and these levels are the immediate levels. So if the price was to move, like this is where the price was at London Open or the Frankfurt Open. This is where it was at, uh, this is at Frankfurt Open. So Frankfurt Open and the London Open are quite similar prices. So around this time, when you look at the price, your levels, your most relevant levels are this level, this level, if it goes up, then it's this, this and this, and then it becomes this. And then if you were going to go a little bit further, then this becomes your level as well. This is this this level played a lot uh, last couple of days. And then if price was to go down, then your immediate levels are one is this. Then you have this level, which is the low of yesterday and then the low of the day before. Uh, this is the low of yesterday and there's a couple of lows. So you can actually draw uh, kind of like a rectangle around this as well. But I use lines. Lines tells me that these are uh, from higher time frame. Then I would go down to the M5 chart and see um, what's happened overnight, right? Let me actually change the uh, settings for this because it doesn't show the period separators. So now when I have the period separator, I know this is where the, the market opened. Uh, no, the op this is the midnight line, sorry. So I want to see what price did from this point onwards up to the Frankfurt Open. So we see that price actually gone up and then it went sideways. So from this, I will then create boxes like so. So if the price was here, then these are the areas that are more relevant to me. I'll see what price does around these areas. And then when price comes down, it would be this level. Now I'll take it to the M1 chart. So when we went to the M1 chart, price was here, right? And it started going down. And then you had this micro pullback. Now, uh, Doug took advantage of it because he was he had the access to or was looking at the 12 second chart. So there was a nice little pullback on the 12 second chart that he took and it took one R. That was good. At the time I opposed it, I didn't like it. Um, I didn't like the idea because I was seeing this, that price was in sideways market and it was reversing. Um, but looking at it now, Doug actually uh, did it, it took a good trade. It took decision, a very good decision, because the first candle of the London Open was a momentum candle followed by a pause. So he took a trade there and I normally take a trade there, but today I didn't. So then after that, I, I did not uh, get the opportunity. And then as you can see, price actually bounced off these levels around here, went up 
Uh, but by this time, we have one, two, three, four, five, six candles, red ones. So I'm not really looking for a pullback. Well, I would be looking for a pullback, but if, if it was a pullback, I would want it to be somewhere around here in this, this region, not this huge big candle. So when the big huge candle happened, then I wasn't interested in this. Even though after that, there was a strong candle here, but as you can see, it still has a, a wick here. So I could probably catch this on the 12 second chart, but I wasn't gonna go to the 12 second chart for this. Uh, so when I took the, if I took the, if I take the, the low of this, then my stop loss is very big because I have to keep this range. This candle kind of was very big, two, 20 points, and the market is still in range. Didn't take this, uh, but then I think I tried a couple here, and now I'm gonna take it to the other chart uh, where actually everything happened. So this is the chart on which I traded. So as you can see, we have these uh, um, the seed indicator or the M sessions indicator that actually helps you to plot these horizontal lines, uh, one for Frankfurt Open and the other one at London Open. I monitor these and these are what I call the trend of the day. If the price is below this, I'm only going short, right? So when this pullback happened, this one, I have these lines here and I was worried that it might bounce off it, so I didn't take it over there. But then when it cleared it, sort of, and there was another problem here is that when, when price went up and came down, it did not create a new low low. That's what we want. Uh, but it pulled back nicely, so the pullback was pretty nice. One could have taken it, but then there was another problem, which was the resist the support level as well. Um, anyway, if, we, if I took it, it would be a break even. Um, what I did then take was with a lower risk, I took a trade below the low of this box um, and I knew very well that it might bounce against this level. So I took only a test entry, like a very uh, quarter risk entry there was because I thought that if it continues to go, then I might add another quarter or half a percent over here, but it didn't. And as it went up, I exited, um, still saved about six points because it would have gone and hit my stop loss over there. Then price went up and this is where I don't trade because um, I would trade towards the open if the price has already moved, let's say 100, 150 points, and then it turns around and creates a setup, then I will take it. If momentum is there and stuff, I would consider it as a reversal entry. The market has enough of move that direction and now it's moving, that's a different thing. But in this case, it has not moved, it's only moved 70 or 75 points, which is quite a lot for if you compare it to Forex, but for DAX, it's not. For DAX, you need 150, 200 point move before you consider reversal. Anyway, it went up. As you can see, it's stuck to the 10 year may very nicely. Um, if you were watching the M5 chart, this is actually a dip, like a very deep pullback. So if you put the FIB expansion, uh, not the FIB expansion, the retracement on this, you can see or you probably can't see. Let me change the color. I, I, like, I like to keep it very light. Let me get rid of that. So as, as you can see here, 62% pullback. So it was still um, basically a wave one and two here. So it could have been taken. And the reason um, I didn't take it is because price was above the 10 EMA. But if I was keen on it, and if it was a uh, for example, price went up above these levels and there was nothing to the left, then this would be uh, in consideration. For example, or if price was actually in this formation, but there was nothing to the left and it was in the direction of the trend, then I probably could have taken it. But even on M5, you can see that it's gone above the 10 EMA, um, which means, and it's too far deep, 62% pullback, so we didn't take that. But after that, price dropped quickly. Now, Usually after a drop like this, there is one candle here, like a little pause, which becomes a waltz signal. Um, but that didn't happen on this. Even on the 12 second chart, there was nothing here. I took a cheeky breakout trade. This is a breakout entry. And now I know that price is actually moved. By the time my entry would be, it's moved about 55 points. So I'm uh, really looking for a small uh, scalp. And that's all I did is that I entered here and my target was hit over there. Uh, so that's one trade I took, a quick scalp, um, just a 10 point. And then we have the pause candles. Now I'm aware here is that price actually stretched, peeled away from the 10 EMA. 
so the walls probably won't have a very strong effect uh, but you want to sometime try it and be careful with it and I did try it. Uh, it it did hit my target point eventually which was only 10 points but when it came back it went down and went back up I had already moved my stop loss to break even so it became a break even and if I didn't take it I'd be okay if I took it I'd still be okay that it's that kind of trade it just happens so after that there's a little uh, three a two candle pullback with a third candle confirmation which is a red candle uh, I almost took it almost took it but right at the end of it I thought no I'm not going to take it so I had the pending order and then I deleted it so I had a pending order below this candle and and then I went to that one and then it in so when price went up you can see it's hitting the lows of these candles. Uh, entries can be taken sometimes below the, the low of this or below the low of this seed. Uh, if you watch my other videos, you know that I use the gator indicator. So the green line and the red line of the M's gator are exactly the same like this 10 EMA and 20 EMA. Uh, so it's kind of similar. So when I look at these two lines, it shows me what's going on on the gator and the AO. Uh, I go into further details about this in the low bot strategy, uh, which you can access. It's on the on the website. And if you remember, you already have access to it. It's lesson 16. Um, the Waltz setup that I talked about is that this is lesson 14. There's about 17 lessons explaining this. And there's a whole strategy that you can formulate based on the Waltz pattern uh, on the higher time frame as well, specifically on the higher time frames. Anyway, so then market went down. So it is a new lower low, right? And as you can see here, I, I almost went short, uh, trying to chase the price. Uh, you know, when it pulled back a little bit, I put this order, but then I cancel it straight away thinking, okay, that's, I don't want to chase the price. And if I did, it would be a rent. And then you have the two candle pullback uh, with the third candle confirmation. I went short here for a quick scalp just targeting these lows and got myself 10 points and so I had um, a quarter well let's say quarter of a quarter loss here and then have 1% win here and then a 1% win here and that it wasn't 1% actually it was a 0.5% uh, so turned into something almost like 1% for the day and after that, I just uh, didn't trade. And that's all, because all you need is one hour of price action with this, and most of the time. Now, if I was like, uh, you know, normally, I, I, I do a take, a, uh, take a trade here. But for this October, I've told myself that I'm only gonna trade pullbacks on the M1. Last month, I got stuck in a couple of days of really bad uh, price action. I lost quite a lot of percentage of my account in those two days and I realized I was doing exactly the same thing which I tell people not to do to, to not trade inside the range uh, because uh, but the market has was has been so you know fluent and in a flow in the last few months that I just ignored that and I thought it would go but then when the market goes really slow and it loses momentum and loses volatility the 12 second chart becomes very dangerous a 12 second chart is very good for the setup one pattern the m1 is very good for the setup one but when the volatility goes down the 12 second chart will become very spiky it will be very jumpy it would jump 10 15 pips against you in a flash and that resulted in quite a lot of uh, bad trades so I resolved that issue by sticking only to the M1 chart. M1 chart, when the volatility goes high, uh, you'll have to apply, you know, you'll have to calculate your lot size based on the size of the candles. So your variable, your lot size will keep going up and down. And that's where the SNOMS Advanced Trade Manager comes in handy. So if you have the uh, these buttons set up to bar, uh, be at one ratio one, it's on the ratios now, and target point to ratio one so that means that whatever the range of the bar is so if the range of the bar is 15 it's going to calculate your stop loss based on those 15 points so the target point if it's two ratio one is going to be 30 points so it kind of takes into it takes volatility into the account 
So for example, if you have a, if you go with a 10 stop loss and 10 target point strategy, and on that day, the market volatility is too high and your ATR is let's say 15, then that means that you could even get out um, before a candle closes because every candle might be 15 to 20 pips. And if your stop loss is only 10, then it's not enough. So that's what it is. And that's the recap for the day. It was a quick recap last few days. Um, I didn't feel like making a lot of recaps, but there has been some very good days. So some days uh, we finish or I hit my target in the first four to five minutes, because for example, if the market uh, does this and then takes a pause and there's a, there's a, there's a seed here on the next candle I'm in. And in the third minute, I'm usually out. So three to five minutes is usually enough for a trade. And if I hit my one or 2% for the day, I'm done. So um, that's the strategy. It's very simple, very powerful. Discipline is required though. So that's what it is. All right, so that's the recap for the day. Uh, if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comment section. I would love to reply to your questions, any type. And do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything in the future.